Hey, what's going on everyone? I'm John from 16 Views. It's no secret that the Mavic Mini is a really good drone, but DJI definitely had to take out some features to keep it under that 250 grams price point, as well as just omit some software features so it's not competing with its higher end drones. While I can't make your build quality better or give you like obstacle avoidance sensors, I can give you an app that offers you some features that you probably wish you had, like Active Track. So if you haven't heard of it before, Litchi is basically a third-party app that you can use to replace the DJI Fly app. And I didn't really hear about it until I was just going through my like Google News aggregator and it brought it up and I was like, oh, this seems like a kind of cool app and like what it seems to be offering seems really helpful. And so I looked on YouTube uh, to see how it worked with the Mavic Mini and there was like some videos but none of them were like crazy comprehensive and they were just a little hard to like understand. So I'm gonna try to make this video as helpful as possible, answering hopefully most questions that you have, as well as the biggest questions that I had when first researching it. And if after watching this video you still have a question or you need me to clarify something, just drop a comment and I'll answer it as soon as possible. Litchi works with most DJI drones. I don't think it's supported for the Mavic Mini 2 quite yet, but I think it's coming soon. And then I know that the Mavic Air 2S is rumored to be coming out in a week or two, and by the time this video drops, the Mavic Air 2S might already be out, and so it'll probably be a month or two until Litchi adds support for that Mavic Air 2S. But the drone I'm using for the purpose of this video is the Mavic Mini 1, but most of the features are going to be exactly the same for all other DJI drones. The first part of this video is going to be going over like all the features and everything the app has to offer, and then the second part will be kind of like, do I recommend it for the $20 that Litchi is asking for. So when you first open it and connect your drone, you're going to notice that the app isn't quite as minimal as the DJI Fly app. It's a little more like the DJI Go 4 app that they used with like the original Mavics and like the Spark. So to switch the flying modes, it's in the top left corner and the default like basic one is called FPV and that's just your general view, that's your general mode, like what you're gonna get in the DJI Fly app. The next is Waypoint, and Waypoint isn't available for the Mavic Mini yet, but Litchi does says it's coming soon. How soon, I don't really know. And what Waypoint basically allows you to do is go onto your computer or onto your phone and set a route that you want the drone to take using like a Google map, and then you execute that route and your drone will you know, take that route, always pointing in the direction that you set, then making the turns and everything like that. And I think it's a really good way to get some complicated shots or if you wanna get like a hyperlapse or something like that, but don't wanna worry about controlling the drone yourself, you can set those waypoints, that route that you want the drone to take. The next one is follow, and follow basically locks on to the GPS signal of the controller, and then your drone will follow the GPS signal of that controller. And then in follow mode, you can set things like the altitude you want the drone to have while following the controller, the distance, and then like the, the angle of the heading and all stuff like that, and then the gimbal and all that kind of stuff. The next thing is orbit, and orbit, like it says orbits, but in the DJI Fly app, you set a subject for one of the quick shots and then it'll orbit a subject. Whereas on Litchi, you can set just a point on your map. So you can see if I set a point right here, it's going to orbit around that point that I set on the map. And then you can adjust things like the altitude you want it to fly at, the radius you want it to have. You can set the radius from almost 1600 feet to just 16. So it depends on the shots you want, and then you can do the speed. And I think this is great if you want to orbit maybe like a building or something like that, rather than like a, a human subject. So I think that's really nice to have. Then the next one is Pano. It's a self-explanatory, basically it goes up, takes like 40 images and stitches a Pano together. I found that the like stitching isn't great, but you know, it's fine. If you always want to make it a little better, you can take it into like Photoshop or Lightroom or something like that and edit yourself. It'll just be a tad more complicated because you'll have more images to work with. The next is focus. And focus, you can basically set a point on the map and then no matter where you fly the drone, the drone is always going to keep that point that you set in the middle. So no matter if you move to side to side, up or down, it's going to adjust the gimbal or the yaw. I think it's the yaw. Is Yaw this way? I don't remember. But it's going to constantly adjust the drone to keep the point that you set on the map in the center of the frame. So this is good if you, again, want to do a building or like a stationary subject, something like that, and not have to worry about adjusting, you know, the gimbal or something like that, the drone will do it for you. And finally, there is the track, and this is probably the biggest feature that this gives you. This offers you uh, kind of an active track-like feature. So to do that, you basically have to swipe on the box, not like the classic drag like this, but you have to do it like kind of like you're zooming in. So I'm gonna just put it on the controller. It's not gonna let me, you know, take off because it won't like DC airspace. Um, 
but you can see it's locked on onto the controller. It's giving me a green box. If you keep it like this, it's going to act like a track. You can move the drone around and it'll keep, you know, your subject in center frame, but it's not going to follow you. To get it to follow you, you have to click the little person button up here and it's telling me, you know, I have to be flying, but then it's going to give you a little warning like, hey, there's no obstacle avoidance sensors. So if you crash, you know, it's your fault, but then it'll track you. And then you can choose things like tracking quality between normal and high. High, it says it's for like better smartphones. So like I'm assuming like newer iPhones and newer Android phones stuff with um, better like chips. And I'm assuming this will just make the tracking better. And then you can do aircraft rotation if you want it to rotate and kind of be completely automatic or if you want to rotate itself, you can choose between auto and manual and then just stuff like orbit speed and joystick limiter, all that kind of stuff. The tracking quality is fine. It's nothing like great because obviously DJI makes it themselves or this is kind of third party and utilizing just like visuals rather than like obstacle avoidance sensors and all that kind of stuff. But when I was testing it, if I ran around and you know really quickly and then ran like under it, it has trouble like turning, pointing the gimbal down and keeping locked on the subject. But like for like basic tracking shots, I think it'll be totally fine. Okay, so those are all the flight modes. Now let's take a look at the settings. So the settings are kind of basic by default, but you have the options between like units and then the type of map you wanna use, GPS coordinates. You have the options between like go to home altitude and like the max altitude and stuff. And you're gonna to wanna to change this because the defaults are kind of wonky. And by default, return to home is turned off. So one of the first things you wanna do is go into the app and turn that back on. And then you can do a dynamic home point, which is something that they offered on the Spark and some other drones, where the home point is basically just where your controller is or where the GPS signal is coming from. So if you're on a moving object like a boat, the home point, it'll automatically return to where your controller is even though you're moving, which I think is a really good feature. I've used that when I'm like flying it off a boat or something like that. So if it returns to home, it's not just landing in the water where we used to be, it's coming back to where I am, which is a really good feature. And then there's just, you know, other things like the gimbal motions and the transmission channels and all that kind of stuff like that. Uh, you can do cache photos and cache videos, overexposure warnings, grid lines, basic stuff like that you, that you get on the DJI Fly app. And then you have the option to put it into like a, a FPV mode if you have like Google Cardboard or one of the goggles like that. You can do it. Um, I'm not really sure how because you need to have your phone in the goggles but then your controller needs to be connected. I don't know if you'd have to get like a longer cord. I'm not really sure how that works. I've never tried it, but you can do, you can do a VR kind of thing. And then you have all the things that you'd expect, like in DJI, you can adjust the exposure settings. So you can do auto or manual and auto. You can adjust the EV comp or you can just go full manual. You switch between photo and video with this little dial here. All the video settings are the exact same. You get 2.7K at, you know, 24 and 30 frames per second, and then 1080 between 24 and 60. Photo settings, uh, you can do uh, interval shots, so you can like do a timer or something like that. Another thing that you can do is you can take AEB shots, and AEB is basically an HDR kind of thing. It'll take a shot at like normal exposure, then plus one EV, and then minus one EV, and then uh, it'll give you those three images, and then you have to merge them in Photoshop or Lightroom or something like that to create an HDR image. From what it seems like to me, it does its job, and then you just have to merge them in Lightroom later. It doesn't merge them, you know, on the phone. Then you can choose between image sizes, between four by three and 16 by nine. That's the same with the DJI Fly app. Then there's video settings. You can adjust the anti-flicker. And then style settings. Style settings is, this is probably my favorite feature of the app. Style settings basically allows you to adjust the sharpness, the contrast, and the saturation. So if you wanted to create like a fake log kind of thing and take down the contrast and the saturation, you can. So let's say that I take down the contrast and then I take down the saturation. So, you know, it kind of looks like a similar to a log profile. These settings, these this flat profile settings are gonna carry over into the DJI Fly app. So if I wanna adjust the picture profile settings here, but then fly with the DJI Fly app, cause you know, I like the aesthetic a little better, I can do that. It's gonna save the exact same way. You're still gonna get that flat profile. But I do like this cause you can kind of like fake a log style. So it may be a little easier to color grade. And then I like having the option to adjust the sharpness because I do find that the Mavic Mini tends to overcompensate for its smaller sensor and then over sharpen videos. So I usually set the sharpness to minus one or two just to give it a little more even look, a little less post-processed look. 
So then you also have things like, you know, auto exposure lock, and then you can adjust the gimbal roll, um, format an SD card. I noticed that when I'm recording video, it's often like SD card isn't fast enough, even though I'm using like a Sandus Extreme Pro or something like that, something that should be plenty fast enough. I haven't really had a problem with it, but it may give you that warning that the SD card isn't fast enough. It should be all fine. So it gives you all those camera settings, which is great. And then finally, there is a little share button if you wanna do Facebook Live, your controller, I think, or Litchi View, whatever that is. I'm assuming it's another like live streaming platform. And you can do all the same thing there. Uh, I've never used it, but you can. And at the top, you'd have things that you would expect, uh, like how many satellites that are connected, the battery percentage of your controller, then what mode you are in, P mode, S mode, or C mode, you know, C mode being the slowest, S mode being the fastest and then how strong your connection is from the drone to controller, and then finally the battery life. And you can click on the little battery icon, it'll show you like the voltage, the temperature, how much remaining power, you can adjust the low battery warning. And then in settings, you do have the option to, you know, adjust between what type of maps you want. I just have to use Google Maps because I find that Google Maps is usually the most comprehensive and everything. And in Litchi, it still does give you all the no-fly zones and everything like that, as you can see which is really nice. And then at the bottom, it does give you things like the longitude and latitude location, you know, how fast you're going, how far you are from the controller, all that stuff like that. And I think that is basically everything that is in the app. So now let's talk about, is it actually worth it? Okay, so the big conclusion, is the app worth the $20? This is kind of tough. I wouldn't necessarily consider it a necessity, but then I'm also not disappointed or mad at myself that I bought it, you know? Like it's useful, but I don't know if I want to use it all the time because at least aesthetic wise, the DJI Fly app is much better. I think if the Mavic Mini is your first drone and you just got it and you're really considered a beginner, I don't think you need to buy the Litchi app just yet. But if you're like me, maybe a little more experienced and you want to start getting some better shots out of your Mavic Mini, I do think it, it is worth it. For me, the biggest feature is definitely being able to change the picture profiles and then especially having that carry over into the DJI Fly app just so I can adjust the sharpness if I want to try out some flat profiles and apply a LUT to it or something like that, see if I can get more dynamic range. I do think that is a great feature. But if you want just a hard yes or no answer, I will say yes, I do think it is worth it. While some of the things are half-baked, it does have a lot of really good features, and especially if that waypoint feature ever comes out, I 100% think Litch will be worth it because being able to set routes and like points for your drone to hit to get a certain shot, like I said with like a hyperlapse, or maybe certain shots around a building or in an area that may be a little more complicated to do manual, I do think that waypoint is gonna be an absolute game changer and if they do end up releasing it, I would totally recommend it. If you do wanna see a video about waypoint, if it ever actually comes out, uh, just let me know in the comments or drop a like on this video and make sure to subscribe so you don't miss it. If you don't wanna subscribe, that's fine, it would mean a lot, but you don't have to. Just do drop a like on the video, and like I said before, if you have any questions or you need some clarification about what I said, drop a comment and I'll answer as soon as possible. I'm John from 16 Views, see ya.